Okay, so time now to look at middleware, which at first can actually be a pretty confusing concept to grasp, but actually once you get into it, it will click very quickly and you'll understand how, why and when you should use it. So let's just start out by heading over to the Slim documentation. There'll be a link for this in the uh, course link section about what middleware is. Now, just kind of coming straight down to this diagram here, uh, when we basically go through our application or the life cycle of the application, when we hit this page here, obviously what we've looked at now is pretty straightforward, but lots of things are happening. Now, as you add middleware, these kind of add layers to your application. And I always explain this, it's like an onion. Essentially what's gonna happen is each layer of middleware will be called in turn before it hits your application. And then once this is done, we come from the inside of our app out. Now, even this kind of concept can seem a little bit tricky. And what I'm gonna do is explain in this part why you might actually use middleware. And it's actually very simple, it just works for common things that you may wish to do when you're running your application. So consider this, before a user gets into a page in your application, for example, uh, in this case, what we're gonna be doing is working with a topic index. Let's say that they have to be signed in to access this page. Well, if you think about it with middleware, what we can do, and I know there are two layers here, but in this case, we'll just build one layer. We come from the start into our application. This will check if we're signed in. If we're not signed in, what we can do is update our response or our request, depending on what we need to do. In our case, what we would do is if a user isn't signed in, we would probably add a header to our response to go ahead and set a redirect header to redirect the user away to another page. Now, checking a user signed in is probably the simplest example but of course, what you can do is add things to your uh, request object. Uh, you could go ahead and add things that you then maybe wanted to access within uh, a view, maybe within your controllers, any of that kind of thing. And most of the kind of add-ons that you find for Slim will actually use middleware to handle uh, things for you. So for example, down here, we have things like cross-site request forgery protection. What this will do is it will go ahead and add in the tokens that you need to check cross-site request forgery to protect at your application. And the same with things like flash messages as well. And lots of other add-ons will use middleware to achieve what they need to. So with that out the way, what we're gonna do is in this part, just look at a simple uh, closure-based middleware example, just so we can get the hang of how we build these up. And then what we're gonna do in the next part, we're gonna look at how we create this and attach them to roots, look at our example, and finally we'll go on to class-based middleware, which is a lot tidier. So hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, by the end of this section, it should be crystal clear. Okay, so what we're gonna do is head over to our Bootstrap app file, and we're gonna write some middleware just down here. Now this is gonna be really messy to start with, but what we'll do is, like I said, go over to class-based middleware, and we can obviously put that inside of app, and it just makes things a lot tidier, a lot easier to organize and uh, update. So what we'll do in this case is create, like I said, closure-based middleware. So I'm gonna say something like middleware, and of course you would give these more descriptive names if you were creating closure-based middleware, but I'm just going to create a closure here, and into this, what we get is a request, a response, and the next middleware we need to call. Remember, this acts like an onion. We go from the uh, top middleware that we need to call all the way through, we have to actually call the next middleware. So um, we're gonna take a look behind the scenes at the code in just a minute of how this works, but let's go ahead and uh, create a request in here, response, and our next callable middleware. And we can do some dying and dumping on this if we want to, just to kind of check things out. But essentially what we want to do here is modify the request in some way. Now, this example is taken directly from the Slim documentation, so you can go over and have a good look at that if you're still finding this confusing. But all we need to do now is using the request and the response, which we know what they are, we've seen them throughout the series a million times, we can just go ahead and modify these. Now for our response, we know that we, when we respond with a request, we have the body which we can modify either by uh, updating the JSON, uh, anything like that. In this case, we can manually get the body. I don't think we've looked at this yet and we can write to the body. So for example, I could write before here and why don't we go ahead and 
say return next, passing in our request, passing in our response. So what we're doing here is we are getting the next callable middleware. We're returning it so it can further then be called. So let's say we had three of these like so, and we wanted to add each layer of this to our application. This would be called, this would be called, this would be called, and then finally we send the response to the browser. But let's just stick to one for now uh, because this pretty much works flawlessly within Slim anyway. You don't really need to really understand what's going on behind the scenes, but we will take a look. So what I'm going to do is just come over to our route and I'm going to add this middleware to this topic route that I have just set up here. It doesn't matter whether you're using a controller, it doesn't matter if you're using a closure based route, it really does not matter. All we need to do here is add and then give the name of the middleware. And of course, because this uh, in particular is a closure based middleware, of course, what you can do is skip this step altogether and you could technically go ahead and paste this in here. So if you ever do see that, it's essentially the same thing. But what I'm gonna do for now is just separate this out into a separate variable, kind of makes a little bit more sense. But like I said, we'll be tidying this up later. Okay, so now that we've done this, what would we expect to happen? At the moment, we just see topic index, but of course we are calling this middleware, grabbing the response and writing before. So let's go ahead and give it a refresh. And it looks like I've uh, misspelled middleware. I've put middle and mare. So give that a refresh and there we go. So before here, we now have the text before. Now, if you wanted to do something at the end of a request, and in this case, of course, we're just demonstrating by appending onto the uh, text that's being output in the browser, but you may wish to do something after a user has maybe landed on a page, then you would go ahead and you could maybe unset a session, you could um, unset a flash message, any kind of thing like that. Well, in this case, what we'd have to do is go ahead and assign the response to the next request. So in this case, we wouldn't just directly return this, we would go ahead and pull it up there. And then what we would do is using this newly set response, we could do something afterwards. So in this case, I'm gonna say response. And again, we can go ahead and get the body. And in this case, we could go ahead and write after. And now really importantly, we need to return the response, the next response. Now, if we don't do that, what's gonna happen is we get an error. So you can see here, middleware must return instance of PSR response interface. So it has to return uh, something that uh, implements that interface. Now, don't worry too much about that yet. We'll take a look in a moment. But as long as I return that next request, we go ahead and get this. We've done something before our request, which could be checking if a user is signed in, setting some kind of token that we need. And then after the request, which could be doing any kind of clear up operation, anything like that at all. So now that that's out of the way, let's just dive into the source code. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this because we're gonna take a look at something a little bit more useful in the next video. Uh, but if we just head over to um, uh, the vendor folder here, over to Slim, over here, over to App, let's go ahead and take a look at that add method. So you can see here what it's doing is it's saying this add middleware, a deferred callable, so it's essentially anything that we can call in here, and we're passing this in to an add middleware method. Now, this doesn't exist in here. If we take a look at the top of this class, you can see that we have a middleware aware trait. Uh, so if we go ahead and open this, this is just over, we come over to here, it's just in here. Now, if we take a look down at that add middleware, what this is doing is a couple of checks. So middleware can't be added once the stack is dequeuing, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Then what we are doing is we are adding on to the stack. So we have a middleware stack. We've already kind of established that like layers of an onion and we're going ahead and we're adding on this so it can be called in turn. Then what we do is return this at the bottom because we need to be able to chain things on. So for example, over in our roots, what we need to be able to do if we just come over is say something like add middleware and then maybe add some more middleware and then maybe do something else. So that's why we do that. Okay, so now over in the uh, middleware aware trait, what happens when we actually run our application? Well, let's come over to our app.php file. And what I would normally do is if I'm kind of searching this stuff out, I would just do a little search for middleware. Now we've already seen this method here, but if we come further down, you'll see that when we run the application here, we go ahead and we call this process method. So this is 
going ahead and processing this here. This is the response that we are returning when we run our application. So we process, come down to the process method, take a look at what it's doing, and sure enough down here, traverse middleware stack. So now we have a method called call middleware stack, passing in the request, passing in the response, again, really important. And this method actually lives over in our middleware aware trait as well. So if we go ahead and search for call middleware stack, what is this doing? Well, it's taking the request and the response. In this case, it's type hinted. And here we're grabbing from the stack, the top item and going ahead and calling the first item and returning the response. Now, this is only doing this once, of course, because we know that however many pieces of middleware that we add to our application, these are being called in turn from themselves. So like we saw earlier inside of here, we are calling the next middleware, returning that so it can be called. And then down here, if we had many of these, it would just call these over again. And obviously this is a silly idea and a silly example, but hopefully that makes sense. So really the only thing you should know about middleware is we can do something before the application, as we've already seen in this example, we can do something afterwards and we can call the next middleware in the stack as well. And hopefully we kind of know the kind of things we would want to do before and the kind of things we would want to do after. So now that we've got that out of the way and we've had a little dive into the source code, let's get rid of this. We're going to rebuild this up in a minute. Uh, let's close these off, but I would always recommend going ahead and referring to the source code if you get stuck. And what we're going to do is build some middleware that will redirect a user if they're not signed in and they're trying to access something that they can't.